So I finally acquired a fragrance I have a long history with and one that is really iconic in the fragrance world, Serge Luton's Iris Silver Mist. Uh, we go way back. I can remember trying it at Barney's when they first released the bell jars into a few boutiques here in the U.S. At the time, I think I was really mostly interested in Frederick Mall. I also would buy fragrance maybe one to two times per year, so I wasn't quite into this crazy collector phase yet. Um, so I did try it at Barney's then, but I didn't buy it back then. Since then, I've seen it come up on the website. It goes in and out of stock. I signed up for updates. Um, the last time it came in, maybe six months, maybe a year ago, I waited a day and it was gone yet again. Um, and also I almost bought it when Barney's closed. It was on their website. I remember it was marked down only just a little bit, like 15%. And I kept waiting, thinking they're going out of business. Surely <laughs> they'll have to take it down more than that, but eventually it sold. So it's one that's been very elusive for me, always just outside my grasp. I had tried it back then at Barney's. Um, I was into fragrance. I've always been interested in fragrance and spent a lot of time choosing my fragrances almost since I can remember. Um, in college, Dior Homme was kind of my go-to. Then I bought Eau Noir and Bois Argent. Um, but I was more the kind of reasonable person who would buy one per year, maybe one or two per year and not really have a large collection. So I didn't buy it at the time when I had the chance in store. And I got the chance uh, maybe a year ago as well to test to test it again because I had thought, you know, is it worth a semi-blind buy if it comes back into stock? And very kind base noter sent me two versions, Iris Silver Mist Palais, Palais Royale, and what he labeled Current. So I thought I could also do a quick little comparison. I can remember when I first got really interested in fragrance uh, to where I was reading forums, Serge Luton was the bee's knees. Everyone talked about it. This fragrance came up over and over again in recommendations. Um, so it's quite nice to finally have it after all these years. Um, so for this scent, there's not that much to say. It is iris, iris, iris. It's a very rooty iris. It's not powdery to me. It's very cold. Um, it's fairly strong. It has kind of a musky uh, dry down, but there really isn't a whole lot more to it. I think upon smelling it again, I wasn't all that wowed. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like mind blowing. But I think that's just a function of all the time that has passed since it came out. There's been so many iris fragrances since. Um, I have quite a few iris focused fragrances myself. Um, so it's maybe not as earth shattering as it was the day it came out, but it's still a lovely, beautiful, really iris solar floor or solar root, if we can say that. Um, so I've worn it a few times. And this is one that I think works better in the bell jar because I think my early assumption when I was reading about Serge Luton was that bell jar must be more concentrated since you're just stabbing it, but they're not. They're, he, they're just fragrances that were moved into this exclusive collection. So some of them I think are better sprayed, but this one I think I noticed with just a few dabs, it wasn't enough to uh, smell it all day. It lasted really well. Um, so for the comparison, I've done this on paper. Again, I'm not the type to really worry about different batches. Um, I more or less follow the philosophy that if I don't like how it smells in store right now, I don't buy it. I'm not gonna seek out kind of the correct version or the best version of anything. Mostly just that's not where my interest in the hobby lies. Uh, I respect people who do do that. Uh, I know trawling eBay for like the right version, the vintage version, um, is kind of the fun of the hunt for some people. But for me, that's just not fun at all. Um, I'd rather just buy something else if I'm not satisfied with what's in store today. So first of all, I can tell you that it smells completely the same. <laughs> uh, so nothing to worry about uh, if you're buying it now. Um, I have read this, the, no, the annoying side of, of the equation where people complain about huge differences. Every fragrance every day seems to be getting more and more ruined than it used to be. Uh, no doubt it's true for some fragrances. No doubt uh, there are maybe batch variations. I think a lot more often there's just batch variation than reformulation. Uh, reformulation would imply that you know the actual formula, the ingredients, the proportions are altered 
Of course, that happens for regulation, but we should only be so lucky as to buy a perfume that has enough naturals in it that those naturals might change seasonally or over the years. And I'm okay with that. I even like the idea of if I wore it through a bottle and I repurchase it, I like the idea of it being a little different. Like I've experienced that bottle, uh, now I can experience uh, what it smells like now. Of course, as long as it's not, you know, shadow of its former self type situation. But honestly, I've not encountered that at all in my fragrance. Uh, in the years of, of collecting and buying fragrance, I've never bought something that I once knew that I was disappointed with the way it is now. I know they exist, but that's just my personal experience. Um, so I sprayed on paper thinking that's the most neutral. Um, we've got Iris Silver Mist Now, which would be what's in this bottle. Iris Silver Mist Palais. Some people say, you know, this is the one to get. Iris Silver Mist, what was labeled current. So I assume it's uh, similarly new to mine. And honestly, I'm fighting to find any difference at all. Um, this is unscientific application method because I dabbed this. They did include a free travel spray, which is nice, but I'm debating because I kind of enjoy this dabbed. I'm debating if I should use that for uh, some of my other bell jars and decant those instead of iris silver mist. So I didn't spray this. Um, so I really feel that any difference I'm smelling right now is just due to varied application amounts and methods. This is actually the strongest right now, the newest one. Um, but I'll do a quick skin test using up almost the, the last little bits um, of what I have. I do realize probably someone, let's say you have Palais Royale and you've worn through a whole bottle, and then you buy a new bottle, they're more intimately familiar with that. So they might find more differences. So the current from the spray, the main thing I'm noticing in comparison to my experience, it's probably just a function of the spray that I'm getting a fresher, brighter iris at the beginning than um, the times I wore this, but I think that's just due to the atomization. And then we'll do Palais Royale over here. Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what that means. I know Palais Royale is where the boutique is, but does this mean, was it in a spray bottle available at the Palais Royale before it was Bell Jarred? I think the Bell Jars originally were Palais Royale exclusives, but now they're exported. Um, maybe that means it was the version before it was available for export but I know it means the older version. I know some of the bottles, the sticker says Palais Royale. Honestly, it's one of those things where you think you smell a difference, but then you go back to the other one and you're like, no, wait, wait. So there might be some differences, but I'm really searching for them. And I think if that's the case, then I'm perfectly happy to have the current. Um, so again, what do we get? It really emphasizes the kind of tuber nature of an iris. I suppose irises aren't tubers, but it's a root that's used, as we all know. It's very cold. Um, it's not all that challenging. Some people describe it as challenging because it's just so much iris. It's only challenging in the respect that it's very linear and it very much is just, it is what it is. I could see it being accused of being more of a smell than a fragrance. Um, it's like a very beautiful evocative smell, but it doesn't wear like a typical fragrance. But it's not challenging in any respect of like weird or difficult or smelly, unless I guess, unless you hate iris or unless you're kind of turned off by cool earthy notes or like rootiness. Um, smelling each one. Yeah, honestly, I don't smell any difference. Um, I know your nose can cancel things out. When you smell one thing, you smell it on, you smell it less when you re-smell it. Your nose starts to kind of cancel out the things that it's already smelled. Um, but yeah, I'm searching for something to say about them and I'm coming up empty handed. So if it comes back in stock, it was out of stock again very quickly. Um, but it's really cool that they kind of, it's like a little insider like, like dropping little gifts here and there of little bottles of Iris Silver Mist um, every several months for the fans. Um, I guess another interesting tidbit, in the past ordering from SergeLuton.com came from a warehouse in like New Jersey or something. Uh, so the shipping was really quick within the US, 
but this time it came all the way from France. So I'm not sure if they were shipping from that warehouse just as long as they had leftovers in their US distribution after pulling out and now everything's from France or if it's just Iris Silver Mist or some of the special um, bell jars that are coming direct from France. But that surprised me because shipping was kind of a normal price, like seven, eight dollars, something like that. Um, but it was DHL from France. My only disappointment is that coming all the way from the France boutique, I wish I could have sampled so many different things like Queer Moresque, um, Fumery Turk. There's so many Lutans I want to get my nose on that just have to be blind buys now unless I buy a decant or buy a sample from someone. Um, I'm just like, oh, they took, <laughs> they shipped this all the way from the Paris boutique. Um, there's so many things I'm dying to smell from there. Um, but at checkout, you only had choice between like three things. I got more Santal Magiscule, I got Ekran, Fume, um, but they did include like a bag, the shopping bag you get from Bhutan's, which is kind of cool as well. Uh, so what can we say? It's gray. It's, uh, I think it's perfectly named. Um, today's a rainy day, which is one of the reasons I decided to talk about this. It's Rudy. It's all iris all the time. Um, it really can't be compared too much to anything because everything I can think of to compare it to just has more going on. So the closest might be La Pausa, but that's more powdery. It has kind of vetiver in the base. Um, maybe the closest in terms of feel is Iris Nazarena by Aedes de Venustus because it's equally kind of cold. But that one has, to me, a lot of juniper that takes it almost in this kind of vintage masculine shaving foam territory, but modernized, um, maybe with the addition of the iris. Um, but I feel that that's the same mood as Iris Silver Mist. But um, I think to this day, no one's come out with an iris kind of iris and only iris that is as good as this, as iconic as this. I'm very happy to see that Lutans is keeping it in fantastic shape. Um, and I'm really happy to finally have this bottle. It's probably been 10 years or more since I've had my eye on it and been thinking about buying it. And finally, here it is. So hope you enjoy and you get your bottle of Iris Silver Mist one of these days too, if you haven't already.